Here's Brody Brazil. So last week I went back to my high school in Castro Valley for the first time in, I'm pretty sure, 25 years. I don't think I've been back since 1999. Here we are in 2024, and it was amazing walking around campus to look at some of the buildings and scenery and think, oh yeah, this feels just like yesterday, like it's 97 all over again. I'm 16 years old. Here we are. But in other ways, I looked around and felt very unfamiliar and like I was on a different planet. And it was just such a mind warp to be back again, a place that I spent so much time and hadn't gone back in 25 years. But there I was. And I was there to give a speech. I appreciate the high school for inviting me. There were two hour long sessions to speak to high school seniors. And what I wanted to do was give them the theme of this. Here's 10 things I wish somebody would have told me when I was your age. And so I posted about this on social media and some people said, well, what was in your speech? We would have loved to have seen it. Well, I didn't record either of the two hour long sessions, by the way, there was some Q and A at the end to fill out the time. I didn't record either session, which probably was a better idea, but instead what I'll do here is recreate the speech. I printed out my notes all over again. So I'll, I'll kind of run through these 10 things I wish somebody would have told me when I was their age. I thought this was a valuable thing to do. Honestly, these are things I put some thought and time and effort into, and I will share them with you right here, right now. The first thing being this, when you're a high school senior, what you don't realize is that your life is dramatically about to change. All you're used to are the train tracks. You've been on these tracks for so long through elementary and middle school and now high school, and people have always told you, here's what's next, here's what's on your path, you're familiar with the surroundings, but change is about to happen. Now, change doesn't have to be scary. Like You can select your friends and bring them with you into whatever life you choose next, and all of a sudden you get more choices. But what I don't think anybody realized when I was that age, I mean, it was talked about change is going to happen, but you don't realize that you're not going to see a majority of these people and this scenery ever again, maybe until like a high school reunion. People move Routines change, but I didn't want to scare anybody. So that was kind of my point here is that change can actually be exciting. But just to understand when people talk about this, like it is really going to happen to you quite soon if you're a high school senior. The next thing I asked to most of the students is to raise their hand if they already had an idea of what they wanted to do for a job or a career path or kind of what their aim was in life. And I'll be honest, maybe like 25% of the kids raised their hand. I thought that was great. I felt like it was exciting for them because that's how I was to know pretty much exactly what I wanted to do at that age. I thought it was exciting because a lot of them are actually going to get to live that life out. I mean, I'm a prime example and I know others too who were just like me. They knew what they wanted to do. They were lucky enough to already have that. And it's exciting to know that you're right around the corner like you have to do the work to get there, but you can be there right around the corner. But I also wanted to point out to them, don't feel too pressured. If you think you want to do something and then you get into it and you realize, oh, this isn't what I thought it was, don't feel pressured and it's okay to pivot. In fact, I gave an example of a very good friend of mine who did that exact same pivot, graduated high school, went to college up in Washington to become an engineer, a year and a half into his schooling and college realized that engineering wasn't for him. He wanted to get into sports medicine and athletic training and came to San Jose State, joined me. We lived together for a couple years. He finishes, he does an internship. I won't say where he got in, but he got into professional sports. And he's been with a Bay Area team as one of their trainers now for the past, I want to say 15 plus years. And so you can pivot. You can leave high school with an idea of this is what I'm going to do. And I'm guaranteed to do this, but you can successfully pivot. So it's great if you do know what you want to do. It's fine if you don't have any idea what you want to do, but just understand that all of it is fluid and uh, it's exciting to have career plans, but uh, you don't necessarily need to bank on them forever. I also wanted to make a point to all of these seniors that for those that are going away to college or those who just won't be around their parents or caretakers anymore, they're going to have a whole new perspective on their parents. And I say that because I know their teachers probably tell them that, and I know their parents probably tell them that, but I wanted to maybe be the, the cool kid at 43 and say, trust me on this. And as a parent now, too, of a young child, you don't realize like taking care of yourself, 
and meals and bills and things that maybe a job that you'll have to take care of as a student, responsibilities and somebody to tell you go to class, like you're not going to have any of that. And so again, it's kind of jumping off the train tracks where things aren't so set. You're going to appreciate your parents a whole lot more right around the corner than than you even know. I mean, choosing to go to class or not, like I said, you know, when you're in high school, go to school. We need you to go to school. That's on you. You don't have your parents. You're going to see your parents dif- differently, a whole lot differently once you're out of high school. Okay. Number four here out of the 10 things that I wish somebody would have told me is that all of these kids, kind of unlike me at the time, the internet wasn't like the internet today, but all of these kids are growing up and living in a very public and documented age. And I wanted to say, like, choose your social tracks wisely because the things that they do and post on social media, especially at a young age of 17, 18, 19, 20, maybe they're not thinking straight or these are things they wouldn't do in real life. But they are trying to impress their friends on social media. They are trying to have some personality and and show some, I don't know, uniqueness or, or become who they want to be. The point is, don't do things on the internet that you wouldn't actually say or do in person. And also realize that these tracks, they don't necessarily go away. So in five to seven years down the road, when somebody's looking up little Billy Smith and their Instagram because they're going to hire them for a job and they go, whoa, whoa, what was this from six years ago? Like those tracks that you lay down last a long time. And this is a different age. I didn't have to really deal with this coming up. But kids of this day and age, they definitely have to. So choose your social tracks wisely because they don't go away and they are out there for everybody to see. All right, point number five, thing number five out of 10. When it comes to trying new things, a hobby, a special interest, a career, a direction, this is the time to do it. The next five to 10 years. And I know you'll be busy with college, but these are the years to have free time. You don't have a family to take care of or necessarily entire responsibilities. You might have to have a job. I certainly did when I was in college. But if you don't try things in the next handful of years, like if you've wanted to learn how to play an instrument, now might be the time. If you, And in my case, it was, it was learning how to fly. Um, yeah, that's when I picked up aviation is the tail end of college and into those first few years out of college. These are the best, most opportune years of your life coming up for free time and to try new things. And my method on trying new things is this. It's going to stink to look back in life and say, what if I would have tried that? I wish I would have tried that. What if is not a pleasant feeling? The better thing is to have tried something until you don't like it. There's no pressure. If you don't like music lessons, if you don't like golf lessons, if you don't like flight lessons, at some point, you're not committed to it for life. Try it out. Do it until you don't like it. And then try something else. So this is the time, this is the time to hobby, right? Just exiting high school into college, explore yourself, figure out who exactly you are. Point number six is to really start networking over the next 10 years. And I know when you tell a high schooler, start networking, they're like, that sounds like an older person thing to do. That sounds very stiff. It doesn't have to be networking with all of your college professors and professional people in different industries. How about just network with your friends? People of, of similar uh, interests and maybe career paths or uh, just people similar to you or people different from you. It is so valuable within five to ten years when you're looking for the next opportunity or next job and the people you met and remember and have a good relationship from high school are still your friends and the people from college are still your friends and the people from that internship are still your friends. Network the heck out of the next 10 years. Meet a lot of people, have good relationships with these people, and then find out where you are in a decade because networking is so important. And it, like I said, it doesn't have to be so formal. Emails and resumes, we're not talking about that. We're talking about meeting good teammates and staying in touch with good teammates because you just never know where they're going to go, where you're going to go, how you can help them, how they can help you, how maybe a friend of a friend of a friend can help you. The world is is an intertwined small place that you don't realize. And so start networking right now. It's never too early for that to have a network. Okay, number seven here was I told every kid that might be going away to college. And look, that could be a different state. It could be 40 minutes down the road in San Jose, like where I went from the East Bay. But I urge 
kids that are that are going to be going away from home to truly get the full taste and the full responsible experience of living at and being on a college campus. Because you know what? I didn't do that. I was way too focused on work and getting my degree, getting in, getting out, getting done. And you know what? I should have taken more weekend nights and gone out to that party or gone out with friends or... And I say do stupid stuff. I don't mean irresponsible stuff. I mean stuff that just didn't matter and be a little bit more casual with my time instead of so focused all the time. And don't get me wrong. Being a square, being career focused, like that greatly helped me in the years right after college. I already had a job. I was already making strides. I don't fully regret that. Like it was valuable time spent. But I also know so many other kids who are kids in college and they got more of the college experience. They went to more of the football games and the sporting events and the clubs for this and that, and they got to know more people. Maybe they just had a happier college experience. I didn't have a bad one, but mine maybe wasn't as, I don't, I don't remember it as fondly as I see others do. So I'm, I'm, I'm telling and reminding high school seniors that when you, if you are going away to college, or even if you're staying local while you're on campus, Get the full campus and college experience. Okay, number eight got really weird and spicy. I say meeting people on here, but I I phrased it to them like this. Let's talk relationships. Ooh. Um, You know what? Because as you get older and you look back, and I'm a family person who knows a lot of other families now through our neighborhood and my son's in school. And so it's interesting to look at how people met each other and how things happened and how couples met. And you know what? There are a lot of people, a significant amount who were kids that met in high school and they were high school sweethearts and they got married and things worked out. But a majority of the people that I know certainly had no clue about each other in high school. They met at some other stage of life well beyond that. So I I just wanted to point this out without getting too deep in the weeds for kids. And I know relationships are, are a significant part of their high school experience. And I say relationships, it doesn't even always have to be a love interest. It could just be friendships too. But relationships and friendships, you don't have to pressure them or pressure them to happen when you're in high school. I'm somebody who didn't even meet my wife until I was 29. So that's like 11 years past any of the kids I was looking at. So I'm thinking to them, like, if you think that you've just like your job and your career, if you think you've got it squared away and this is for you, like, that's great. (laughs) I'm not going to go against that at all. But most of you, in this case with relationships, the person out there for you, you may not be meeting that person until another decade. You're going to run around and do life for another decade. So don't stress about that. And I know plenty of people who didn't meet their their person until they were in their 30s. The point was this. The overall arching, overarching point was this. You never know when somebody super important to your life is about to enter your life or is about to exit your life. And it's always amazing in reverse. Like, oh, what if I didn't do this? I wouldn't have met that person. Or on the exit, like, it's amazing how that played out. Somebody who was such a key part of my life back then is now nowhere to be seen. It happens that way. You just never know when important people are going to enter and exit your life. So that was my relationship advice for number eight. At number nine, and you can kind of see that this is embedded with a lot of other things, do not rush the next 10 years because it's already going to happen so quick. And there's so many, I think, high school kids who look at the age of 23 and they're like, oh, I'll be out of college. I'll have my degree. I'll be in my job. I'll be making money. Life will be easier when I'm 23. I just got to get through these years. Do not rush the next 10 years. That was a big point for me to make. There are so many people that want to get into the career, the program, or something else, and then they want to get into a family life in their 20s. Life, I promise them, I promise you if you're of this age, life's going to come to you so fast, you do not have to go out there and force it or rush it or find it. You know what? 10 years goes by pretty fast. All these grays, 25 years from high school goes by pretty darn fast. And then this last one, like I literally saved what I think might be the best for last. I wanted to end strong here. You get out of life what you put into it, but you get out of college and the next handful of years out of high school, you get out of it what you put into it. 
Because I know there's a lot of kids rolling around a high school campus and especially in the coming months when they figure out where they've been accepted to go to college and, oh, I'm going here and I'm going to do this and I'm going to play professional sports. And every kid, of course, they have these high ambitions and I'm not here to stop that. But the reality is their plans in high school don't always go as planned when it comes to real life. You have to put in the work and to get something out of an experience, you have to put so much into it. I went to San Jose State, and in terms of the broadcasting world, no, it's not USC, it's not um, Syracuse or Northwestern or all the or, or uh, it was it was Missouri. What I was thinking about the other day. Anyway, there's all these top tier college programs for broadcasting where you can go, you can get your diploma, and then you can go brag about it during internships and your first couple job interviews. Hey, I went here, and that's great. But I've known so many people that went to one of those very established and esteemed institutions, and quite honestly, when it came to the real world, they were lacking either the drive or the experience or the skill set that I saw other people have, and they went to San Francisco State and San Jose State. And it was because some people at those state schools and maybe those less acclaimed institutions, they put more into it. And so they got more out of it. And the, this is just me talking about my background and, and, and world of, of broadcasting. It could be other industries. It could be other experiences too. The point is, don't get distracted by what everybody else is doing or says they're about to do. You kind of got to do this. Exiting high school, going into college, in terms of your plan and what you're trying to get out of it. I promise they're not going to accept you into Syracuse, into the journalism school, and just say, here you go. Here's everything you need. In fact, here's your first job. You're set. You're good to go. Enjoy your life. Enjoy your career. You got to go work for it. You got to go grind for it to get what you want out of it. And so my only real rule on this, and I know I'm spending a little bit more time on it, is that you can't get rewarded if you don't actually put the work in. It doesn't matter where you go. That is not going to to find you the entire time. So anyway, just wanted to end the video like that. Those were the 10 things I wish somebody would have told me back when I was that age at high school. That's the speech I gave. Let me know what you think about it in the comment section below. Thumbs up on this video helps me, this video, this channel. Also, don't forget to go, go down there and hit that subscribe button because you know I would love to see you back here next time.